Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Vital Point Church Online. Uh, once again, my name is Ron. I'm the pastor of Vital Point Church. I've given a title to this message, Racism, Division, Is There Hope? We were scheduled to wrap up a series called Verse 19 today. And uh, this series has been all about looking at different verses from the Bible that teach us something about ourselves and about who God is and to give us something else to think about in the season that we find ourselves in. Today was scheduled to be Philippians 4, 19, where it talks about how God cares for us and that he provides through us through his glorious riches. And that message was one that I was looking forward to sharing, but earlier this week, I felt very strongly that I needed to change things up, that I needed to enter into the conversation around racism, division, and is there hope? Now, for those of you who are watching today, I just want to say to you, thank you for checking in and being part of this conversation. But what I need you to know is that this conversation is very much directed towards Vital Point Church family. So if you're a Vital Point Church person, this is directed at you. If you are visiting and you are a guest with us, maybe you were invited by a friend, someone shared it, or you saw one of our ads that came up on your social media and you're joining in today, I trust that you will see this as a conversation around a kitchen table. Every once in a while, you have to do that with your family. You bring them together to reestablish vision, values, mission, direction, all that stuff. And so today, that is kind of the conversation that we're having. But those of you who are watching that are new, I hope that something that is said or done in this will inspire you. That maybe something that's said or done in this will encourage you to consider faith, consider church, maybe even consider Vital Point Church. So I want to enter into this conversation on racism, division, is there hope? A little over a week and a half ago, on a Wednesday morning, I grabbed my coffee after I had done some reading and praying and journaling, and I sat on my back deck at my home, drinking my coffee, scrolling through social media. I began seeing posts that I wasn't sure what they meant. Posts that had three words, I can't breathe. I wasn't sure exactly what this was about, so I did some quick research and realized what this was connected to. It was connected to this horrifying video that popped up on many people's feeds. And as I sat and watched this video, I was horrified. I felt deep within my very being, the sense of grief, anger, fear, all the different emotions began to emerge in this moment, like many of you who have seen the video. I was confused. I was concerned. In this moment of watching this video, and I don't recommend that you see it, but I found myself praying for this man's family, for his loved ones. I even found myself praying for the police officers in the moment. I felt very strongly that I needed to do that as I watched and saw this unfold. I wanna have a conversation that I believe is absolutely essential for us as a church, to get some clarity, to get some understanding. Here's what I want you to know up front. I recognize that I am a white male church leader. I recognize that I do not have much experience with racism from the sense of experiencing it directed at me. I recognize that. In some ways, I feel very unqualified to even have this conversation. But I believe that as a pastor, as a church leader, it is my responsibility to speak into this moment, to give some biblical perspective on this. I also know that there are some of you that are very excited that I'm entering into this conversation, and some of you are praying, and I have a group of people that have been praying about this Sunday morning, that have been praying for us, that have been praying for what is happening in our world, and some of you are, are very excited that I'm having this conversation and doing this message. I also know that there's going to be some of you that are not very happy with me. I recognize that there are some of us that are not going to be happy because you feel that I should have gone farther. I should have said more. But here's what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask that we all extend kindness and grace to one another in this season. We are all on edge. I'm on edge. You're on edge. 
And for whatever reason, we find ourselves in a season where everything feels upside down. Everything feels backwards. And so I believe it's absolutely critical for us to extend kindness and grace to one another in this season, in this time. So as we navigate this conversation, I ask you to do that. As a vital point church person, as a follower of Jesus, I ask that you extend kindness and grace. So how do we enter into the conversation? Where do we set it up from? Well, we set it up from Jesus. Jesus is the one that we take our direction from. When you do a study on the Bible and you do a study on Jesus, you begin to realize that Jesus is the head of the church. We are his body. We take direction from Jesus. How he lived is how we are to live as the church. I spent a few moments reflecting on the life of Jesus, getting ready for this conversation. And I recognized very early on in my reflection that Jesus demonstrated times when he crossed the barriers and reached out to people who are marginalized and people who are oppressed. We see this in incidents where religious leaders would throw a woman at his feet who was caught in adultery. They were expecting Jesus to condemn her, but yet he reaches down and he writes in the sand. And the religious leaders slowly fade to the background of the story. And he loves her and he accepts her and he tells her to go and sin no more. We see this with Jesus when he interacts with children. The disciples try to shoo the children away because culturally they were not allowed to interact with adults other than their own family. And so he, he says, no, let the children come to me. And he interacts with them. He invites a corrupt tax collector to be part of his inner circle. There's this one moment that I was reflecting upon this week. It's found in the Gospel of John, John chapter 4, where Jesus intentionally goes by this well. And as he's there by himself, there's a woman who comes along at noon and she draws water. Now, culturally, we don't fully understand this moment, but in the moment, it was very clear for her that she should not be talking to this Jewish man because she was not Jewish. She was a Samaritan woman. And, he sh and the man should not be talking to her. But yet Jesus crosses that line, crosses that barrier. I love this about Jesus. I love that Jesus demonstrates for us the importance of crossing those barriers, going and moving towards those who are oppressed, those who are marginalized. This was what Jesus did. Jesus offers his life to those who are broken, those who are oppressed. Jesus crossed racial division to show us what it means to live in the kingdom of God, what it means to understand what God came to do through the person of Jesus Christ. The reason he showed us this is because Jesus wants us to step into this moment that we find ourselves in. Racial reconciliation. What is racism? Well, I'm going to call it out for what it is. Racism is a sin. Now, you might say to me, Ron, well, how do you come about defining it as sin? Let me explain it this way to you. It's a sin because racism and what it does is it reduces others to lesser than who God had creates them to be. Let me explain it this way to you. The pinnacle of God's creation is humanity. When God created, when he spoke creation into being, he said that it was good. And when he created humankind, he said that it was very good. Humans are the pinnacle of God's creation. We are created in the image of God. One writer said this, one author said this, that we are God's living statues roaming the earth with the imprint of God upon our souls. Racism is a sin because it stands in direct opposition of God's creation. It stands in direct opposition of that we are created. Every single human being is created in the image of God. Everyone. So racism stands in opposition to God and how God intended us to see one another as his image. It's also a sin because of this reason. It's a sin because it stands in direct opposition to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
you might say, well, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? The gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news of what Jesus came to do. Jesus, the Son of God, came to this earth to walk on this earth. He came as a baby. He grew up. He taught. He gathered a few followers, but ultimately he went to a cross. He took the sin of the world upon himself. He went to a tomb and was resurrected three days later. This is the good news of the reconciliation through the Son of us with God. This is what he did to bring about the new creation. This was the active work of the love and the grace of God through the person of Jesus Christ. Racism stands in direct opposition of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, last Sunday, in the Christian calendar was what we refer to it as Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is a Sunday where we celebrate the fact that the Holy Spirit came. In Acts chapter 2, you see that the Holy Spirit comes upon the followers of Jesus and empowers them to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. And when you read Acts chapter 2, what you begin to realize is that the Spirit gave them the supernatural ability to speak the language of all nations. When people came running to hear and to see what had happened, they were astonished. They were overwhelmed. They were in awe because they heard the people of God speaking in languages that was unnatural to them in a way that spoke to all nations, all people. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for all people. Acts chapter 2 speaks to the truth of this. If you're not convinced by that, Think about the last words of Jesus before he ascended back to the Father. Jesus spoke to the disciples in Matthew chapter 28, and he says, go and make disciples of all nations. All nations. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for all. Oh, if you're not convinced about that, look at Revelations. Revelations chapter 5 speaks to the truth of, of the Lamb of God, which referring to Jesus, opens a scroll, and in the scroll is the names of people from all nations. We must understand that the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the call of the church is to represent the message of Jesus to this world. And that means it's for all people of all color, of all nationalities, of all backgrounds. That is the wonder and the awe and the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we consider racism through a biblical world vision, worldview, we must see racism as a sin because it goes against everything that God and Jesus stand for. Now let me say this. It is okay to see people as different. God created diversity to reflect his nature. But where we must be careful is that we must be careful not to look down on other people of different race or different color. We must see each and every person and love them because they are created in the image of God. That is the wonder and the beauty of what God has done and what he is doing is the diversity is natural it is normal for us to see p people different but what what we must do is love them through the image of what God has created them to be that is powerful and that is life-changing so to address the topic of racism we must see it as a sin because it stands in direct opposition to the message of Jesus now I want to speak to this idea of division. It's a conversation that we must have. Is this word division? Racism, division, and hope. David, our site leader in Exeter, had a conversation with one of his friends who is an accountability pastor that he is in relationship with. And his accountability friend is a, is a black man. He's an amazing young man. He said this, that we must be careful that we don't cross lines and expect others to be as passionate about this issue as we might be. We must be careful. 
And what I mean by this is that I am concerned, I am deeply concerned that this topic of racism has the potential to divide the church. Because sometimes what happens is people take a specific emotional issue and they place it on others and they expect others to have the same direct passion that they do. They expect the church to stand in the moment and be as passionate about this as what they are. There is a lot of social media shaming that is happening in this season and we must be careful. We must be aware. We must be prayerfully considering how we respond to this in this moment because the enemy of the good news that the church is proclaiming has the potential to divide the church over issue. We have to be careful of this. We have to be aware of this. Just because someone doesn't post right away doesn't mean that they're any different than you are and as passionate as you are. Listen, for us as a church, I want you to know something very clear. I'm speaking to you as a Vital Point Church member. We paused and we waited before we posted anything about this. Because the truth is, we didn't want to simply just post about it without a plan. We didn't want to simply post about this without well thought out way of looking at this. We wanted to make sure that our motives were correct. We wanted to make sure that our compassion was in place. We wanted to make sure that we were caring. Like, listen, our, action, our actions speak louder than our posts. My concern is, is that we make ourselves feel good because we post hashtag Black, Black Tuesday or whatever. We, we post these things and, and we're not prepared to make the difference. See, what we must realize is that if we are not careful, this particular moment, this particular season we find ourselves in is just going to be a blip and then we move on. What matters, and this is what David's good friend said, is that what matters in a month from now, two months from now, three months from now, a year from now, how much we've stepped into this space. We have to be careful. We must be aware. Because I am convinced that the enemy of the good news of Jesus Christ is going to do whatever he can to divide us. There's a young woman in our church. I won't say her name, and I'm sure she's watching right now. She's got a, a passion in her gut right now about this. And her and I have been texting and dialoguing on this. And what I love about this is that there are going to be people that are called to be at the front line of this particular issue in this particular season to be the ones who blaze the trails for racial reconciliation. This young woman that is passionate in her gut right now is potentially one of those people. There are going to be churches. There are going to be churches that are at the front line of this. I almost see it at the tip of the spear or the tip of the arrow. They are the ones that are going to be the ones that bring about the greater voice because God is calling them to it. I've watched some of these videos. I've watched some of these pastors of churches in, in the United States that will be called to be at the front line of this. But there are others that are called to be the silent supporters through prayer, that are going to be behind the scenes, that are going to be the breath that breathes life into people, into churches. We must be prepared to understand that each and every one of us will find a lane. Even churches will need to find a lane to run in and stay in that lane because that is who God has called them to be. That is who God has called us to be at times. Listen, let me speak to the truth of this about Vital Point Church. In our physical gatherings, we all recognize that we're predominantly a white church. I get it. I understand it. I've had many conversations with people about this particular thing about Vital Point Church. Do I wish and pray that we were a more multi-ethnical church, a multicultural church? Absolutely. Because I believe that the church is the best reflection of the kingdom of God. Now, here's the thing. I can't manipulate that. I have to trust as a pastor. I have to trust that the way I enter into this conversation will begin to crack the door open so that our church can become more multicultural, that the way we address issues, the way we address topics will create the space to demonstrate the beauty and the wonder of the creation of God's kingdom and how what God has called us to. 
but we must be careful we don't use this issue to divide the church. We must unite together under the one call. Here's why. It comes from the word hope. We as the church carry the message of hope. This is what we need right now. We're all searching for hope in the midst of this season, which is, feels so upside down. We have the answer. The church of Jesus is called to a message of hope, to a message of good news that comes through the person of Jesus Christ. It is because of him that we as a church step into these moments where we allow ourselves to be his voice, where we allow ourselves to be his hands, to be his feet. We are called to be that people. We are a people of hope. And we have the answer in his name is Jesus. He ultimately is the one that will bring about the transformation. He is the one that will bring about the new creation. He is the one that ultimately will return one day in the book of Revelations chapter 21 where we see that a new heaven and a new earth emerged through the person of Jesus Christ and there will be no more sorrow, there will be no more pain, there will be no more tears, there will be no more sorrow. It will be gone because of the truth of a new heaven and a new earth. The reality of what God is doing in his kingdom will become to full fruition. There'll be the truth of who he is and he'll make all things new. The church is called to be the voice of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul writes about this, that we are the ambassadors. We are the voice that God has given to us as the church that when we plead for people to come back to God, it is the hope in which we proclaim. Here's what I see happening in this season. Here's what I feel so deeply about. Is that right now, we are no longer permitted to gather physically. We're all watching online right now. And what I believe God is doing by His Spirit is that in this season of retreat to our homes, is that he is bringing about by his spirit a fresh new wave of people who will, when we return to some sort of form of physical gathering, there will be such a renewal, there will be such a revival, there will be such a, a powerful wave of people that will reemerge. People like Sydney, who shared her story with us, people like her and others, countless numbers of people, and this remnant will rise up in the midst of the darkness and be light in the darkness, that we will be the people that God has called us to be, that we will be pushed out into our neighborhoods and into our communities, into our workplaces, and we will become that voice of reconciliation. We will become a voice that stands up and says, it says that racism is a sin and that we have the answer of what it means. Listen, we can all do better. We can all do better. And I don't believe, and some people are not going to be happy with what I'm about to say, racism is going to be something that we face all the time because sin is still prevalent in our world and the evil one is still opposing the things of God. But we must recognize that we can do better, that we ourselves, here, here, listen to this, we ourselves, we can stop right now and ask God to search our hearts like I have been doing and ask him to reveal if there's any ounce of racism in us. I don't care if you're white, black, Hispanic, I don't care what color your skin is. We all must step back as followers of Jesus and ask him to search our hearts and get before God and ask him to transform us to be the people that he's called us to be. This is the message of hope. This is the power of the movement of God right now. And I wanna ask you, are you prepared to do what you need to do? And I'm not talking about posting. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being the person who reflects the message of Jesus Christ by the way you speak, the, by the way you live, and by the way you see others around you who are created in the image of God. This is the hope we have through the person of Jesus. I'm gonna ask you to do something right now, right in your home, right now. I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes. And I want to do something with you that the church has done for centuries. Is that the church has pleaded for the Holy Spirit to come. Come Holy Spirit. 
And what I want you to do is right in your home, I don't care if the kids are running around all behind you, I don't care what kind of chaos is around you, but what I want you to do is just close your eyes. Maybe put your hands out and say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit right now in my home, in my life, in my family. There was this moment when Jesus appeared to his disciples right after he, uh, right, soon after he rose from the dead and he entered into the space and it says that he breathed on them. May the Spirit breathe on you in this moment. Come Holy Spirit, come. I wanna say a prayer for us right now. As our, our eyes are closed, maybe our heads are bowed or maybe you're locked in on my eyes. I just wanna say a prayer right now for each and every one of us. Father, we come before you and we, we recognize the sin of racism. It, it stands against everything about who you are and who you have created us to be. Holy Spirit, come. Come into our lives and transform us in a way that allows us to see people for who and how you see them. May you forgive us Forgive us for those moments where we've not stepped in and been your voice of hope, been the voice of good news. Holy Spirit, speak to us right now. Convict us, challenge us, transform us. Father, we look forward to that day when your son returns and gathers people from all nations and we will ultimately end up worshiping you together as one. May this be true. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us today. May God bless you.